And back in September of 2018, I started teaching to the Atma family, the family of the elect, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 28. And if I have not attended one funeral, nor have I preached one funeral um, in, in, in an entire year. I have not attended a funeral. I have not preached one funeral. Now, I, I, this is the first this is the first time anything like this has happened. I've been a pastor for 37 years. And in every one of those years, I preached numerous funerals and I attended numerous funerals. And I, I mean, at one point I was preaching two or three funerals per week and attending a lot of them. But since I declared and I led the Atma World Missionary Church people who by faith of a little child, the outlaw family, the outlaw church declared with me, Matthew's gospel chapter 16, 28, that we will see the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. We will not taste of death until we see the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, see him coming in his kingdom. And as a result of that, I have not preached one funeral nor attended one funeral. God has not let one member of the Atla family die in over a year. God Almighty, his name is Jesus, has let, not let one family member die in over a year. And I have not attended a funeral. There has been a mighty supernatural move of God even outside of the Atma family, that I have not attended a funeral in over a year. Now, that's important, and I want to tell you why it's important, because many of you, like uh, Brother Honecker and now Brother Donald Springfield, Brother Honecker down in Louisiana, Brother Donald Springfield has now jumped on the wagon with you in making a declaration that he too will not taste of death. Now, Brother Honecker, you got that from your mother, on her deathbed, oh, while she, while your mother was dying, Brother Hanukkah, while your mother was dying, she told you that you would not die. Good God Almighty. Now, Brother Springfield is saying the same thing. We'll get back to that. That's not the major subject today. What I want to say to you, you say, well, Pastor Manning, are you telling us what's true? Yes. I'm, not only I'm telling you what's true, I'm telling you what's holy. I'm telling you about the key of David. I'm telling you about he that opened it, no man shut it. That I've not preached nor attended one funeral in over a year. Not one mem member of the Outlaw family has died. I've been doing this for 37 years, and usually two or three deaths happen per year. Sometimes uh, I've been had uh, a death, two or three deaths per month. But not one member of the outlaw family has died. Even those people who maybe have not even could confess that they will not taste of death, but because they are a member of the outlaw family, they are under the umbrella of Matthew's gospel, chapter 16, 28, and they too have not died. Not one family member, not one family member of the outlaw, and this is globally, worldwide, not one has died. Not one. This is globally, whether in Australia or in Argentina. And we, 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 we pass up people who are living in some pretty troubled zones. You know, Argentina had a lot of trouble going back a, a few months ago. But that's not what I want to come talk to you about today. What I want to talk to you about today is that we're already enjoying the life power. What I want to say to you now is that we're, we've been teaching, read Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 through 13, seven times, and you will have a miracle or a supernatural occurrence or a mighty move of God on your behalf will, will take place. Now, you'll remember in Matthew's gospel, in Matthew's gospel, <clears throat> chapter um, chapter six, Matthew's gospel, chapter six. Uh, let's see here now. In Matthew's gospel, chapter six, starting at verse nine, <clears throat> the um, and that Jesus. In Matthew's gospel, chapter six, starting at verse nine, Jesus said, "After this manner." Therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day 
our daily bread and uh, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, I'm reading that verse because you have already written that verse on the table of your heart. And you've written, Jesus said, in order to get a prayer through, pray this prayer. In order to get a prayer through, pray this prayer. Let's say, for instance, you want to pray uh, for a healing. Before you ask for the healing, pray this prayer. Just say these words. Before you, let, let's say, for instance, you, you got a, you know, you have a son in jail or a daughter on drugs. Before you ask the Lord, before you ask the Lord to deliver your daughter from drugs, let's go to the Lord right now. There's somebody listening to me right now whose daughter is on drug and prostituting. Let's go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, in your name, Jesus, we just read, we just read the scripture and out of the scripture has has come up this supernatural revelation. I just read the scripture the, of the prayer and you have and you have given this revelation. I just read the prayer and you've given and we are now rebuking the spirit and the taste of that of those drugs and the lifestyle of prostitution that this that, that this daughter be cleaned up. And become a great mother and a great great mother and a great grandmother and shall not taste of drugs nor death. In your name, Jesus, shall she be. This young girl shall become a mother, a grandmother, and a great grandmother in your name. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I was saying before the Holy Ghost came upon me there that before you ask for a prayer, before you have a prayer, uh, read this scripture first. Why is this important? Well, it's important because you already know this. Many of you don't have to read it. You got it in your heart. But I am saying, I've been telling you that read Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 through 13. 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 Read Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 through 13, and you will have a supernatural occurrence. You see what happened to me just a moment ago? When I read the, the prayer, instantly the Holy Ghost came upon me and gave me a revelation about a, 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 a mother praying for her daughter on drugs. And then God gave a prophecy that the daughter will be delivered and also will become a mother like, like her mother and a grandmother and even a great grandmother and will not taste the drugs again. Read at Revelation. Now this past Saturday while we were ordaining the elders, Elder uh, Wilbert Reed, Elder Joseph Noah Ramos, and we were ordaining uh, Deacon Roger Williams and Deacon Elijah Lewis and Captain Elijah Lewis. While we were ordaining them, these brothers had the unique privilege. God blessed them. Uh, they were the last of the ordination, but God blessed them to sit under the seventh reading. Good God Almighty. God blessed Elder Reed, Elder, Elder Ramos, uh, uh, Deacon Williams, and Deacon Lewis, and Captain Lewis to sit on the, the seventh reading of Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 through 13. They sat under the seventh reading. The Saturday was a powerful day. I mean, it was a mighty, 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 mighty move of God that worship service was. They sat under the seventh reading. That ordination was that ordination that happened on Saturday was under the seventh reading. When I first started reading it in the pulpit two weeks ago, that was the seventh reading. That was the seventh reading when I when Elder uh, Ramos, Elder uh, Wilbert Reed, and uh, uh, Deacon Williams and Deacon Lewis sat under the seventh reading, and it was a mighty miracle move of God. Now, what I want to say to you. I want to say to you, right now, we had you reading Revelation chapter seven, verses three through chapter three, verse seven through 13. We had you reading it seven times. And just like I read the, the Lord's prayer, 
a miracle took a, a, a revelation, a move of God delivered a young girl from drugs. Just to, just, just a few moments on this program today, on this broadcast today, a, a young girl was delivered from drugs and delivered back to her mother, clean of drugs, to, to, be, to live her life uh, through the period of a mother to a great grandmother. On this broadcast today, on this broadcast today, a young girl was delivered from drugs just as, and I had no idea that that, I, that, that miracle was gonna happen, but it happened because I read Matthew's Gospel, chapter six, uh, starting at verse nine, the, the, the Lord's Prayer. Now, I'm saying to you, read, I've been telling everybody and everybody now has done it. Now I'm saying, write upon the tables of your heart. Moses told the, uh, the children of Israel to write the word of God, write it, put it in a little mezuzah, put it on the doorpost, put it on the gates, the post, uh, your gates of your house, write it uh, everywhere you can write the word of God. He told them to write it. And so several years ago, the Holy Ghost had me teach the people how to write God's word. And so we started writing that we started writing uh, the, uh, the word of God uh, as, as, and Deuteronomy goes through, I mean, it's just Deuteronomy chapter 27 is just all oh, everywhere you look. Uh, but yeah, the, the word of God, is here. but see, therefore say, you, shall you lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that ye may be as that they may be as frontless as between your eyes. So here, listen to me now. Listen to me now. I, I want you, because we need to move in supernatural power. We need to move no longer in the natural. We need to move no longer. We need to move in the supernatural. We need to move in God's kingdom. We need to move in the supernatural. We need, need to move in the power of God. We need to move in the, in the supernatural. We need, we need to move in the, the supernatural. We need to move in a power that we need to step up above the natural earth. We need to step up above the earth and, and, and supernatural. Now, we need to get to heaven yet. We, we, we're not walking in heaven yet, but we need to move in the supernatural. We need to move in the realm called the supernatural. Now, many of you have watched the Outlaw World Missionary Church for years, and the Outlaw World Missionary Church moves the church, the ministry itself, the name Outlaw, has propelled us to move in the supernatural. We don't walk in the natural anymore. We move in the supernatural. And you need to move in the supernatural, and here's how you're going to do it. The Lord told me to instruct you. The Lord, by the way, remind me, I got to tell you about the key of David. Uh, he that hath the key of David, I got it. Uh, that's going to be coming up in and 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 uh, in one lesson in uh, lessons in just a few days, um, and starting tomorrow or starting the next time you and I get together, uh, my next teaching under this seven reading in the seventh, and the writing on the table of your heart, everyone who writes that, then I am going to bless your home, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to bless your house. Bless your house and your home. So I got the, the teachings that will be coming up shortly. One will be the key of David. Uh, well, first will be Lord uh, bless this house. Uh, that will be that will be the first teaching coming up in the next few days. Once I finish this whole ma matter of teaching you how to write the word of God on your heart, then I'm going to be teaching Lord bless this house. And and you, so you got to have my voice in your house. And I'll teach you about that. And then the next teaching will be <clears throat> um, the, the key of David. And we'll, talk, we'll teach about that as well. But what I want to do today is to, to have you to um, uh, write on the, memorize, sit down and memorize. Just sit down, take your Bible, get yourself a cup of coffee or something and sit down and, and just read Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 through 13. And read it and read one verse and then and, and until you can memorize it. Where's it at? <clears throat> Revelation. Um, Revelation chapter. I'm to find it here. <clears throat> Got a new Bible. 
So here's what you do. Here's what you do. All right. <clears throat> you want to now begin to walk in the supernatural. You can do that. You don't ever have to go back to the natural again. You don't ever have to go back to the natural man again. And by supernatural, I mean in favor, in wisdom, in vision, in prophecy, in revelation, in miracles, and especially in financial blessings and healings. Now, I told you when I first started today that I have not preached a funeral. I have not attended a funeral in over a year. Since I made the declaration, since I proclaimed with my faith, and I led the Outlaw War Missionary Church family to proclaim as well, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, 28, which are words that Jesus spoke, not us. Jesus spoke that are some standing here that shall not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. We wrote those verses on the, on, at the time. I didn't know what we were. I didn't know we were doing it. At the time, I didn't know we were doing it. But we wrote that verse on the table of our heart. And in, in order for death, when we wrote Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 28, on the table of our hearts, when we wrote that verse, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 28, on the table of our heart, in order for you to have a heart attack, it's going to have to move that verse out your heart. You see what I'm saying? In order for, in order for you to have death, it's going to have to move that verse. And that, that verse ain't going nowhere. Can't no devil move that verse. And then we discovered that the word of God will not return unto him void, but will accomplish that thing wherein God have willed it. Now, I didn't know a year ago in September 2018, when I first started teaching that, that particular subject, subject matter, I did not know. I didn't know that we were writing on our heart. I was just saying, I was saying it, you know, but it's only one verse and it's pretty easy to remember because it flows naturally. But I didn't know that that verse See, that verse took us from the natural to the supernatural. That verse a year ago took us from the natural to the supernatural. I didn't know it. I didn't know that then. It's it just over this weekend while, you know, after we read, after we read in the church the seventh time, Revelation chapter 3, Verse 7 through 13, over the ordination of Elder Ramos, Elder Reed, uh, Captain uh, David, uh, Captain Lewis, Deacon Williams and Deacon Lewis. Then God released these revelations. God released the revelation after we read on the, for the seventh time in the church. God released the revelation. And there are more revelations that I'll tell you about in, a, in another broadcast. But God released the revelation that when we started, when the church declared, the outlaw church declared that we will not taste of death till we see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom, that that verse, when we wrote it on our hearts, we then began to no longer walk in the natural because natural people die. We Listen to me now, listen to me very carefully. We began to no longer walk in the natural but we began to walk in the, the whole church, the whole Atla church began to walk in the supernatural. The entire Atla church began to walk in the supernatural. And some of our young people in the church, they, you know, they were, they, they, there's so many things that are attracting the young people. And what God did, God did some supernatural events upon all of our young people. Uh, from the youngest, from the, from the, from the baby Elisha or baby Naomi, I don't know which one is younger, Naomi or Elisha, I think it's Naomi, that God began to, we no longer as a church walk in the natural. And I didn't know this. I just found this out this weekend. After that message on Saturday, I just found this. I didn't even know what we were doing. I didn't know that we were walking in the supernatural. I didn't know that by, by, by writing Matthew's gospel, chapter 16, verse 28, writing Matthew's gospel, chapter 16, verse 28, on the tables of our heart, memorizing is what it was. We, we, we got it. We committed it to memory. We can just quote it right, right, by memory. What that did for the entire congregation 
was that caused us to no longer walk in the natural, but the supernatural. And for a whole year, we've been walking in the supernatural. And I didn't know. I mean, I knew we were walking in power. I knew we were moving in power. I knew that. I knew that. I knew we were moving. But I didn't know that we have left the natural when we declared that we were not tasted of death, that we left the natural and went to the supernatural. I didn't know that. Now, some mighty, 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 mighty things happened last year between September of last year and September of this year. I'm talking about some mighty things. But I didn't, I, the revelation, the reality that we're walking in the supernatural was real. But I, the, the revelation, God, now I'm telling the whole world. Now I'm telling the whole world. And I did not know. I didn't pay any attention to the fact that I hadn't been to the funeral. I didn't pay any attention to the fact I hadn't been to any funeral or preached any funeral. I not even paid any attention to that. I not paid any attention to the fact that I had not preached the funeral or had attended the funeral. I didn't pay because we're not walking in the natural. We're not walking in the days of funerals anymore because of Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 28. Now, here. We're going to come back to that. We're going to come back to that. But here's what I'm here to tell you to do today is to write Revelation chapter 7, verse 3 through 13 upon chapter 3. I'm sorry. <laughs> write Revelation chapter 3. I keep saying 7. Well, 7 is good, but 7 ain't one we want to write. Listen, for a year... <laughs> We've been, the Allah family, every member of the Allah church, including the children, have been walking in the supernatural for a year. Ain't that nothing? And I didn't even realize I had not attended a funeral or preached a funeral. I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it. So now here, the Lord is saying, even greater than Matthew 16, 28, in, in one regard, that you, you, write, math, you write Revelation chapter 3, Verse 7 through 13, write it on the tables of your heart. That is, commit to memory. So that you get your Bible, right? Then go sit in the chair, and here's what you do. Verse 7. And to the agent of the church in Philadelphia, write. See that? See that? You see that? He said, write. Write. You see that? Now, what have I been teaching you to do? 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 I've been teaching you to write. I've been teaching you to write. Write on the tables of your heart to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. Write these things, saith he, that is holy. He that is true. He that hath the key of David. I'm going to teach about the key of David. He that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth. And then sit there for a second and say, all right, okay. And to the angel at the church of Philadelphia, right. <laughs> I would make tell us something. Uh, these things say, he that is true, he that is holy rather, he that is true, he that hath the keys of David, he that, and you see what I'm saying. And just remember, remember it, quote it and quote it and quote it and quote it and quote it. And probably after you re, after you memorize it the seventh time, then you can move on to verse eight. Then you then you 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 memorize. I know thy works. Behold, I've set before thee an open door. Thou has a little strength, um, and um, uh, no man shutteth, and uh, no man shut. I what's that at? Verse eight. Uh, I have have set before thee an open door. And no man shut it for thou hast a little strength. Yeah. And has kept my word and has not denied my name. All right, just want to make sure you got it right here. Then you and then you'll probably you'll it'll probably take you seven times sitting there, you know, in your room, or whoever it is, and once you read once you quote, once you memorize, rehearse it, rehearse it, rehearse it, rehearse it, rehearse it seven times, then you'll have that. Now you've got verse seven remembered, rehearse seven times, you got verse eight. Rehearse seven times, then you go to nine, ten, uh, until you get all the way to thirteen. Thirteen is very easy. He didn't have, have an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit said to, unto the churches. Actually, I find verse twelve very easy as well, uh, and that's the ver verse about Atla. So let's just go over a couple of things here today. Uh, how many times 
Have you ever had a pastor tell you to write the scripture? Anybody, you've been to other churches, you've been someplace. Has, has, any, has God ever told you the power of writing the scripture? Nobody's ever done that. But now we see what we see here in Revelation. What we see here with the outlaw church. I have taught you for years. Sometimes some of you are going back as far as 25 years how to write, how to write the scriptures, how to write the scriptures. God told the God told John the Revelator to tell the angel to write the scriptures, to write these things, if he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key to David, David, he that openeth and no man shut it, he that shutteth and no man openeth. You see them, you see now, you see the revelation, you see, can you see just in that truth? the power that God, can you see the, can you see what's now happening as a result of us now, see this truth, this truth that is coming forward now, right? This truth that is coming forward now, that we have been walking in the supernatural and didn't know it. When we wrote on the tables of our heart, Matthew's gospel, chapter 16, verse 28, that we have been walking in the supernatural and did not know it. We're no longer walking in the natural. And now, and now, like when I read the, the, the Lord's prayer a few moments ago, a revelation came to me, God revealed to me, a mother who was praying for her daughter on opioids, and I prayed, and God cleaned her up and prophesied that she shall become a mother and a grandmother and a great grandmother just by just by going through uh, the, uh, the the our Father which art in heaven prayer, something supernatural happens. Now there are certain verses that I have. Now you got to listen to me. I'm going to prescribe the verses. I'm not through prescription the verses, but right now and throughout this teaching, the, what you want to do is to sit down and memorize each one of these seven verses. You memorize it seven times. That'll be 49 verses. Remember, and when you do that, when, when you do that, now you are, not, we already walking in, if you're not walking in the supernatural, then you will have supernatural occurrences, miracles, and mighty moves of God, especially financial blessings and healings. But my friends, I, I, I sent out the tweet early this morning that I have not attended nor preached a funeral since September of 2018, and I have been a pastor for 37 years, I've never gone that long without attending a funeral or preaching a funeral. And God is causing a lot of people to live. A number of people are living and not dying because of me. They don't even have an association with me. But because God does not want me attending funerals. God does want, don't want me there. Now, if I have to go, God tell me to go to one, I'll go. God tell me to preach one, I'll preach one. But that's not what I'm looking forward to. Because there are a lot of people who are not going to believe this. They're not going to believe Matthew 16, 28. They're not going to be believe Revelation 3, 7 through 13. But I didn't realize that until this weekend for the seventh, I read in the church the seventh time, Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 through 13, at the elder and, and deacon's ordination. When I read in the elder and deacon's ordination, God then began to pour out all this revelation all this weekend. God began to pour out the revelation. When I, when I ordained these men, Elder Ramos, Elder Wilbert Reed, Deacon Roger Williams, Deacon Elijah Lewis, Captain Elijah Lewis, when I ordained these men, I read for the seventh time over their heads, and now God is pouring out all of this, all of this miracle. And not because of them, but it was the seventh time reading into the church. It was the seventh time reading it in the church, and the, and the miracles began to flow. Now God has shown me that for one year, the entire Atla family has been walking in the supernatural. We are no longer walking as natural beings. We're no longer walking as natural beings. We're no longer walking. We are now, the Atla church from the youngest to the oldest is now walking in the supernatural. And one of the things that God has done for us is that he has brought to us Mother Shekinah Seals, who was walking in her 100th birthday, and she's walking in the supernatural. She's walking in the supernatural on her 100th birthday. So now, here's what you got to do. You got you to gotta memorize 
which is the, the, the biblical way of saying it, the Holy Ghost way of saying it, is right on the tables of your heart. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 through 13. Memorize it on the, and write it on the tables of your heart. Now, what will happen is this, is that God has now given us the revelation. <clears throat> he, he's now uh, given me the understanding that for one solid year, we have been walking on the, uh, uh, the, the walking in the supernatural. Now, the, uh, so let all the outlaw church will go forward under that power. Before I leave you today, I do, I will, I got two subject matters. Well, under the heading of, of memorizing Revelation chapter 3, 7 through 13, and walking in the supernatural from Matthew 16, 28. Uh, I have another subject matter I'm going to teach you uh, uh, because now I'm going to bl start blessing homes. I, I'm going to, I am, you, you didn't know, I am commanded, I am commanded to bless homes. I, it, is a, it is a command, uh, like the tithe, like the offering, it is a command, thou shall not kill, thou shall not steal, thou shall not commit adultery, thou shall not lie. I am commanded to bless homes. I'll come back to that. I'll, I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that and I'm going to teach it. Blessing homes. But it's under the supernatural. But I want you to read before I bless your home. I want you to read uh, and commit to heart, co commit to memory. Revelation chapter three, verse seven through 13. All right. Seven times and be able to quote it. If I call you to just stand up and quote it, you'll just stand up and you'll quote it. All right. And then I'm going to teach the key of David. All right. I'm going to teach the key of David. I've got to teach you that as well. Now. So these are some teachings that I look forward. It'll take place maybe later this week, maybe next week. You just got to log on every day to the broadcast and see what the broadcast is all about each day. Today it was about God released the revelation uh, that the Atla Church, the to total Atla Church, we have been walking in the supernatural for an entire year. We have been walking in the supernatural for an entire year as a result of having writing on the tables of our heart. Matthew's gospel, chapter 16, verse 28, has got us walking in the supernatural. And I have not attended a death. I've not stood by a grave. You know, the Bible says I got to find it. because Oh, I've talked to some time. Bible says that you, if you touch a dead body, you are unclean until the evening. The Bible says if you touch a dead body, you can't go into the temple or the presence of the Lord. I got to find that verse. I taught it some time ago. Touching a dead body. You're unclean if you touch a dead body. However, I have not touched a dead body in a year. Good God Almighty. And why? Because God has got the church walking in the supernatural because we decided, we made them decide it. We committed to God. We committed to Almighty God. His name is Jesus. We committed to Almighty God that we would not taste of death until we see the second coming. When we did that, we had to leave the natural because natural people die. We had to leave the natural and move to the supernatural. Good God about it. We had to take up a residence in a more prestigious neighborhood. We had to leave from the natural to the supernatural. When we made the commitment, we would not taste of death. And now we're walk the whole church is walking in the supernatural. And I've not attended a funeral, not touched a dead body. You shouldn't touch dead bodies either. Anyway, and so we got some further teaching, teaching uh, under this same rubric, under this same head, heading, rather, of the, because I can't teach you this until you, we all on one accord. And when you read math, when you read Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 through 13, you will have a supernatural occurrence or there will be a mighty move of God. There will be a mighty move of God on your behalf when you, when you commit. When you read Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 through 13, seven times, do you will have a miracle? Oh, yes, you will. Oh, yes, you will. Oh, yes, you, you will have a miracle. You will have a miracle. I read today the Lord's Prayer and, uh, and, uh, and, um, and uh, the woman got her, her body back, got her daughter back. 
Mr. Engineer, oh, he found that verse in Numbers where you said, he that touches a dead body shall be unclean. Seven days, whoo, good Lord. Seven days if you touch it. And so I can't be going, I leave you. if the Lord tell you to go to a funeral, and I go, I didn't say don't go to a funeral. I didn't say that. I didn't say that, but you see what the Bible said. The Bible said, he that touches the dead body of any man shall be unclean for seven days. Well, we have not touched a dead body. We have not preached a funeral. We have not attended. Thank you, Mr. Engineer. We have not touched a, a dead body nor, nor been to a funeral because we are walking. The, uh, every member of the Outlaw World Mystery Church is walking in the, in the supernatural. Praise the Lord. Now, let me just say this before, because I have to go. The, uh, I will be teaching, but I, you need to make sure you have committed to memory. Yeah, make sure you have committed to memory, Revelation chapter 3, 7 through 13, that you've written it on the tables of your heart. Then I can teach you, I, then I can come into your home and I bless you. I'm coming to your home and I'm going to bless your home. I'm coming to your house and I'm going to bless your house. Wherever you are, if you're in Australia, you're in Brisbane, I'm coming to your house. I'm going to bless your home. If you're in Argentina, if you're in London, England, like Susan Christian over there and, and uh, Millie Biswas, Millie, 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 I'm going to bless your home over there, over there in Southampton, wherever you are in, in London. I think that's where you are. We're going to bless your home. But you, before I come into your home to bless your home, I need you to memorize Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 through 13. And then I have, I'm going to teach the key of David. Amen. I'm going to teach the key of David. I'm going to teach that as well. And, you know, I've been telling you that, you know, the, the, one of the things that you're going to discover is that we are the outlaw, the Philadelphia church, really, God was speaking about us, the outlaw church. Now, don't forget, uh, your life gifts have been constrained by God. <laughs> That's right. Your life has been constrained by God. There's a whole lot of things that you would have done, but God didn't let you do it. <laughs> and I, you know, I, at some point in time, I will say, Lord, why you didn't let me do that? You know, why you didn't let me marry that person? Why you let me do that? Well, you'll probably know why you didn't do it. But your life has been constrained by God. Your gifts have been constrained by God as well. We're going to come to that. We taught that. We're coming back to it. And I want everybody to know that you are not alone. And sometimes the devil will call, crawl up on you, you know, even though you're walking in the supernatural. He knows how to crawl. The devil knows how to crawl from the natural to the supernatural and crawl up on you and tell you that you are alone, that you're by yourself, he, that he's going to defeat you or this is going to happen to you. I want you to know you are not alone. You are not alone. Not as long as my voice is, and Jesus, is, he's the one that's with you, but you are not alone. You need to know that. You are not by yourself. And by that, you're not being alone. By that, the Lord understands you. He understands clearly. And you're in the matter now of growing, and, and you're coming to understanding as well. You are not alone. You are not alone. And then finally, you need to know that all things work together for good for those who are called to Atla. All things work together for good for those that are called to Atla. Praise Almighty God. All right. Well, I have to close the teaching right here today. I'll be back with the next broadcast. But before I get to the next broadcast, I want you to make sure you sit down and you start memorizing. Now, writing on the tables of your heart, uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 through 13. And there will be a mighty move of God when you do it the seventh time. There will be a mighty move of God when you do it the seventh time. There will be a mighty move of God when you memorize the, for the, and recite from your heart the seven times, Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 through 13. There will be, and, 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 and so praise God that we're now walking in, in the supernatural. This is a bit of a news blog we do looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon 
uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly sinful view. But the man will tell you what God has said, whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be like led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he, I'm the Lord, sir, James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.